So today we're going to go over sagittal value, which is sort of instrumental in understanding how a contact lens fits over uh, your cornea, how a curved object fits over another curved object. And one of the things you're essentially doing is you're, you're, you're trying to measure how steep something is. So we all know that if you had a circle of a given radius of curvature, so here's the center of the circle, and here, this from the middle to the edge would be the radius. Uh, the diameter would be simply twice the radius, or from here to here. Pretty straightforward. Um, so here's your circle, here's the radius of curvature, whatever you want to name it 10 millimeters, 20 meters, makes no difference. Um, so if you were to take a semicircle, half of this circle right here, bisect that circle right through the center and you simply erased all this well from here to here is the same as from here to here is the same from here to there I mean this is what the definition of a radius of a circle is but what we're looking for specifically is we want to know how steep this is and so if I went from the very tip of this and went straight down there the question is, how deep is this? How, how curved, uh, how steep is it? And that depth would be, because it's exactly the same from here all the way through, would be the exact same depth as whatever the radius is. So if this was a 10 millimeter radius for the circle, well, from here to here would be 10 millimeters. It's pretty straightforward. The question, though, for contact lenses is rarely is the di well never that I know of is the diameter of a contact lens uh, coincidental with the radius of curvature. So if you had this same circle, and we'll give it the same radius of curvature as we did, we're going to keep the exact same one from here to there, and let's say it was a radius of curvature. of 10 millimeters. The question is, in most cases, a contact lens would be simply if you chopped a slice off. From here to here, well, if everything else, this was not here, and we were left with this shape here, from here to here to here, our question is how deep or um, how, what is this measurement right there? This right there. If you take a segment off of a circle, off of a sphere, this would be uh, your sagittal value. And it's important. You need to know two things to figure out your sagittal value. You need the radius of curvature and that simply, in this case, was 10 millimeters, but it can be anything that we specify. And the second is, we're going to need the chord length. And what a chord length is, if you took whatever distance, whether it's here, remember, this bisecting right here would have been 20. Well, that would have been 19, 18, 17, all the way. Let's say this one was maybe 12 millimeters, uh, thereabouts, 13 millimeters. The chord length depending on how small I make it, if I make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, you would imagine that the sagittal value will progressively get smaller and smaller and smaller as well. So you need the chord length as well. If you look at this like a contact lens, if you notice the radius of curvature is how steep the shape of your contact lens would be, and your chord length would be, well, for lack of a better word, it would be very similar to your chord length. So if you use basic uh, math and you know a chord length and you know the radius of curvature, you can actually determine what this distance is right there. Now that formula, if you are really, really one of the, our number files like we've spoken about before, if you like your math, the sagittal value 
is simply equal to the formula where if you took the radius and then you subtracted the radius squared minus one-half the chord length and squared that. So if you took your chord length, took it the uh, half of the chord length, squared it, took the radius, squared it, subtracted that from there, and it, I don't really want to go too much into depth with this. This is not the purpose of the class. Um, suffice it to say that this is simply a mathematical constant, uh, it's a mathematical formula. And what I'd like you to do uh, is I've made, instead of doing all this fancy stuff, um, I've made an Excel file where if you give me what the radius of curvature is, if you give me the chord length or the overall diameter of my lens, it'll spit out a number that will tell you how steep this is. Uh, so if you can do that, uh, we'll be all set. So let's actually throw some in there. In this case, you can follow along if you have the Excel. If not, understand that my numbers here are pretty accurate. Uh, so if I had the same lens that had a uh, radius of curvature of 10 millimeters, and I had a chord length or an overall diameter of 20 millimeters, that would simply be the entire semicircle we were talking about before. This would be the center. Well, then your sagittal value would actually be if this here were 10, that's 10, that's 10, that's 10, then my sagittal value in this case would actually be 10 millimeters. That's the easiest one to do because if you're bisecting the circle, just like we said. But let's actually change and make it so we chop off a piece. And let's chop off a piece. If this is 18, let's actually try to measure it so it's relatively accurate. So if we went from something that was uh, this big here, and instead of having a 20 millimeter cord length, let's just make it a little bit smaller to about here. And it would fall all the way up here. So if we changed it to about 18 across, Now, so now my radius of curvature, yeah, we haven't changed the shape. This is the exact same shape. But now we went from a sag value of 20, we just made it a little smaller, but even a small change really makes this really small right here. It really decreases it. Um, you would be going from, instead of 10, if we plug it into this measurement, if we had a radius of curvature of 10 millimeters and we made the chord length 18, well, this new sag actually plummets to 5.64 millimeters. So now, by making this slightly smaller, but using the exact same shape, we've actually changed this value right here to a much smaller number. Now, if I go even smaller again, let's just say it was 10 millimeters. Well, Let's keep the same shape. Notice how, as we make the lens, the chord length smaller, as we make the overall diameter smaller, we're going to try to make that about 10 millimeters. That's 10 millimeters. There to there. Look at how tiny this is. Well, if I went with the same radius of curvature of 10 millimeters, but I made the overall diameter of that lens 10 millimeters, so this from here to here is now 10 millimeters. If I plug it into my formula, my sag value is actually 1.34 millimeters. Look how small that is. Now, this is simply a mathematical way to illustrate uh, if you have a similar radius of curvature and you decrease the diameter of the lens that you're using, that sagittal value is going to shrink. The lens is not going to have as much of a suction cup effect. That lens is going to fit flatter. Now, those are concepts that we've already discussed, but I wanted to put the numbers to it uh, 
And the reason I think that that's important is if we're doing a regular spherical gas permeable lens, that is pretty simple. Um, you have an overall, uh, you have a radius of curvature for your CPC, you have an overall diameter of how wide it is, and you'll get a basic idea of how steep uh, that lens is, and you want to sort of make it fit the cornea and match that shape. But when we start getting into more complex lenses, when we start getting into things like uh, a scleral lens, we're going to stop talking about base curve and overall diameter. Instead of just having for a scleral lens, for example, you generally have your back curve, then you have a transition zone, and then you have the scleral haptic. And then you'll have a haptic which sits right on my sclera here. And you'll notice this relationship has a little bit less to do with how steep the lens is, but we're actually going to start measuring this distance here and trying to see how we can affect that, how we can change that. The sagittal value, the depth of the contact lens overall, is really going to start having a more profound effect. And with some specialty lenses, we'll deal not as much with base curve and diameter, but we're actually going to be throwing in what's the sagittal value? How can I change the vault? How can I change how tall or narrow that sagittal value is to affect the lens fit? So be that as it may, we'll throw some homework in there, but I wanted to not just give you the notes section, but sort of draw it out for you so you can, and illustrate it so you can see a little bit more clearly, and hopefully this makes a little bit sense. Uh, and we'll also give you some more homework to type in some numbers, and you can play around with that Excel sheet to try to come up with your own variations of what you can do. Um, and primarily this will also give you, like I said, an idea of as I change the diameter uh, and make the radius different, how does it change the fitting. And by the same token, if I start typing in numbers where the diameter stays the same, but the radius gets smaller, it's going to be steeper. If I get the radius to be bigger, and I really want you to play with that calculator a little bit to see what the sag sag sagittal value. And the end result is, if you remember nothing else from today's lecture, is if I have any number here and any combination, the sagittal value, if I make the sagittal value deeper, it's going to cause the lens to fit steeper. If I make the sagittal value or the depth smaller, it's going to effectively make the lens fit flatter as well. So, uh, be that as may, uh, take a look for the homework and hopefully this has been somewhat uh, uh, clarifying and if you need to, just watch it again, slow it down uh, if you need to um, and we'll talk to you soon.